G'day folks, long before I bought my uh, caravan to uh, replace my heavy duty off-road camper trailer I'd already decided that I would fit a caravan mover to it to make it a one person job to manage the van. Uh, this is particularly important for storing it at home as it enables me to have unassisted and total control of the van. Um, with it I can very accurately manoeuvre and position it to maximise space in our carport and easily couple and uncouple from the vehicle without assistance, back strain or any little accidents for that matter. I can get into those very constrained and tricky van and campsites effortlessly and without arguments with my partner. These movers they are really a fantastic addition to a caravan. I looked at my new products but was not prepared to pay up to $2,000 for a single axle model. So I got onto Gumtree to find a second hand unit and I was fortunate to find a Rick caravan mover not too far away at what I thought was a very good price. And while it was about 10 years old, it worked very well, except that the rollers would require a refurbishment in the not too distant future. Well, that time's come and I'll now need to do it as the rollers slip quite a bit these days. So I attempted to buy a regrip kit which you can get out of the UK uh, and it's pretty much the only place you can get them uh, but it turns out they say they can't ship them to Australia because the resin kit is considered volatile and post particularly air uh, post will not accept them um, and high insurance, high insurance costs so they're a bit like lithium batteries you know they're just not prepared to carry them. Long story short, I had to track down resin and a suitable grit product locally. And that was a bit of an ordeal, but I did eventually find what I believe would do the job. So let's have a look at the problem, see what it is and how I go about regritting the rollers. All right, so here's the, here's the roller. And as you can see, uh, we've got a steel roller here uh, with a grit it's embedded in resin attached to it um, and as you can probably see here um, it's it started to fall off here's some here um, and you and I don't know if you, you probably possibly can't see that but this is this has made an impression of this steel on here I've cleaned that I've cleaned that bit there um, and you know that's that was sitting on there like that and it's just simply peeled off because the water's got under it. And you can see here that it is starting to, you can see it's just peeling off. So um, that's what I've got to do. I'll have to probably, normally if you get this early enough, you can simply go over the top of it, but I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to do this with a wire brush. probably see um, not sure if this is focusing properly or not but um, these appear to be around about the same size grit um, as the original so this stuff here would have been on here for 10 years I would say at least it's certainly not ain't no spring chicken this thing but uh, all works perfectly well so this is what I'm going to replace it with uh, which is a, a white fused alumina. This is um, just a little sample of it I've got, but um, that's that's what it's going to have to be. Um, so I'm going to have to clean, take all this off or whatever I can get off it, clean it all with a wire brush. The wheel's going to have to come off. Uh, clean the entire roller, and then uh, do a coat of resin, and then you sprinkle this stuff through the second coat while it's still wet. Have to put a sheet down underneath here and then uh, capture it all and the stuff that doesn't stick to it and then a top coat goes on top of that again and that all sets in a couple of hours so um, well it certainly does here because uh, I'm in Queensland so the ambient's pretty warm so it's, it's only in the order of an hour or so uh, about an hour for the resin to set so it's not a big job uh, once you've got it all clean and ready to go and even that should not be that difficult it's just removing this wheel to get to uh, get good access to the rollers but I will do it with a detach because taking this whole shaft out of here I reckon will be a horse's ass so yeah 
that's the plan. All right, we'll see how we go. It'll do for starters. So, um, and here's me. Uh, got me two cans of resin. You know, there's a resin A and a hard and a B. So you have to mix those one to one, and then paint it on. So that's how we're going to do it. Okay, first job here is to get the cap off. Then we've got the split pin. Okay, so it's always a good idea. Got some nitrite gloves on because it's always greasy doing this. So, wheel's not off the ground yet. Make sure you got the wheel chopped on the other side. Okay, so we're free now. All these important bits. As you can see, greasy job. Alrighty. So here we are, down to the pointy end. As you can see, the um, this stuff's in a pretty bad way. So it's a little bit, it's certainly worse at the uh, outside. So that's how I'm going to have to get it all off. It's going to be a bit of a slow, tedious process. So I think what I'll do is you get the picture. I'll um, turn the camera off and just go for it and I'll come back when I've got it done, which could be quite a while. So all right, the battery's going flat in the camera, so it'll give me a chance to charge that up. So uh, yeah, that's the process. And when I get back to the point where I'm ready to... Good idea to wear safety glasses too for this because there's bits fly out everywhere. Uh, might be a better tool to use than a screwdriver, but I'm sure there is. Yeah, so some parts are going to come off easily and some aren't, but uh, this roller's in a bad... Well, it's rusty. So they, made, they moved away from this. The new one's got an aluminium uh, with horizontal ribs running this way. So I guess they had problems with these and thought that was a better... Well, I suppose it was easier to produce too. This would have been more cumbersome. You would have had to... Because you've got to do the uh, rosin and the aggregate, the grit. Uh, it's a bit of a pain. So we'll see how we go. Okay, so I did half of the... I've done, I've done this whole roller now. I reckon it took me about 20 minutes. Um, predominantly using just a, a, you know, a relatively fine blade screwdriver, which is sort of wrecked the end a little bit, but nothing a little quick touch up with the file won't fix. But it was quite successful at removing most of the the uh, grit and the rosin off the roller. Uh, so this side here, I've just done only with the. Um, with the screwdriver and, and just a hammer and it, as I say 15-20 minutes probably I had the whole thing done and I just rotated this um, as you go then you take a bit off roll it around do the rest so as you can see it leaves bits so when you get down to this stage um, to get the last of the bits off this was very successful at lifting off the biscuits you know these parts um, which is, I'm just trying to get this thing to focus, yeah, so you can see the ridges left in the back from the roller, um, but they sort of come off in bits like that and, and a lot smaller and some bigger, but um, anyway, that's quite successful and you can take the rest off. With the big one here, I sort of cleaned up a lot of the excess stuff. Um, so the next process after that, as you can see, it's quite rusty along here. So I've done this half of the roller with a um, basically a drill with a wire brush, and that was quite successful. I didn't. I used that. I've tried this one. This is just a basic one you get at the hardware. But I also had this bigger one 
which is designed to go onto a um, bench grinder. And it's, uh, I had to make a bit up to fit it, it's a 14mm socket, but anyway, I found a 14mm bolt and cut that off and uh, made a fitting for the drill. So I've got a um, quite a brutal uh, brush there. Now it's quite successful, that's removed, and as you can see it's fairly shiny, it's not perfect. But, um, and I, I did it with this and then I followed up with the smaller one. So I'll just show you what I did. So you can see here, it leaves bits, but this brush will take care of that. Now this is vibrating because it's got a piece missing here. And also, it's not quite centered, so not ideal, but certainly does the job. So that's what's involved with this. And then I just went along and I thought I'll tidy up with a finer one, but it really didn't do much more. But as you can see, it gets all of that rusting out of there. A couple of other points I didn't point out earlier when you're going to do this. It makes uh, quite a mess when you're taking this off, when you're banging it off. So down here on the stub axle, you'll see I've, I've got <laughs> now a lot of bits off of this, um, of this stuff that's come off. And it's come off in very small pieces and I've got it all over that. Now it doesn't really matter because I'm going to do the bearings anyway while I've got the wheel off. But um, a lot of rubbish on the ground here, as you can probably see. Comes off in quite small um, components and yeah so it makes a bloody mess so if you've done your axles I'd put a bag over that whole thing so you don't get any of that mess in there and uh, also thought it was probably a good idea to uh, maybe do something a bit more substantial and have it sitting on the jack so I've um, put it on wood from a safety perspective the axle's now sitting on that so I'm not relying on the jack so that was a couple of points there. But look, quite successful, I think. Yeah, so pretty pleased with uh, how that's coming up. So I'll just finish doing this bit anyway. Yeah, it's a bit brutal, this thing. Try a smaller one. Okay, we'll try the um, smaller one. After it rolled away on me. So, here's our dirty bit. Let's see how it goes cleaning up this bit. Okay, well, no, I don't think that's done a very good job. Certainly doesn't look as good as back here, so let's just try the other one. Yeah, that certainly does a better job. So, um, you can see that's better than there more like that so I think these smaller brushes probably don't cut the mustard for getting into the roller as well I probably need a bigger one anyway flat battery so I've got to stop okay so that's all come up much better now so I've done that whole section there with this big brush so I think this is a substantially better move so here we go back to the next dirty bit so we'll do this bit Here we go, so it really doesn't take that long to do. Okay, so I've pretty much done all that now. Just doing a final polish. I reckon that'll do it. Might be time to now look at uh, the rosin. That's all very clean now, that's pretty good. So, I think you can see that's pretty clean. So I'm pretty happy with that. Not perfect, but uh, it's pretty good. I reckon we're right to go. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll go and get me uh, go and get me rosin happening and uh, prep up. So I'll have to put something on the ground here, clean up this mess, I suppose. 
I've got to put something on the ground here because um, after you put the rosin on the roller, the next job is to come along here and sprinkle you know, just with a teaspoon and you just sort of, you know, will sprinkle it by hand till you get a consistent coating, then roll the roller a little bit and do it again. So until you've completely coated it, then all the grit that falls down, you've captured that on some newspaper or something and you can reuse you reuse it so you really don't use a lot of grit at the end of the day anyway I'll get on with it so I've now got the epoxy which I've mixed 50 50 in here so that's pretty straightforward part A and part B and uh, I'm now going to paint this roller so I've cleaned it all the way around So this is just a case now of painting this on. I've put paper down underneath, um, down here to, uh, it's just to catch any of the grit when I get to the grit stage which follows this. So, uh, because you can reuse it. So let's get going with it. Got no idea how much I need, so I just mixed up some arbitrary amount because uh, this is not the kit um, from the UK provider, a company called Regrit, because they won't ship that out here. So I've had to source this re resin locally, um, which wasn't a big problem. I had more of a problem trying to get the grit. Um, I contacted Regrit in the UK and asked them if they'd ship me just the grit without the rosin and they just said no, not interested. I thought, well good on you. Um, wasn't a question of price, didn't even get to that. He just said no, wasn't interested. I thought, well that's fantastic service. But I did contact another mob that does uh, machines for potato peelers. They use a similar uh, gritty internal to take the skins off potato peels and I contacted him and he was very helpful and said look this is what we use and we buy this here and it's and he gave me dimensions of the grit etc regrit on the other hand uh, it refused to give me any information and just said it was um, uh, you know it was company confidential it was a lot of crap it was bloody grit I mean you know what's company confidential about resin and grit I just wanted to know what size it was and what's on top of that I offered to buy it and he still wouldn't sell it to me so you know, it's not as if I'm stealing bloody secrets, I'm just a caravan owner who wants to regrit his bloody rollers. Anyway, a very poor service from regrit in the UK, I thought. Now, as far as I know, that is it. You coat the roller, and you just turn it with the remote. Um, make sure it's coated all the way across. Now it's pretty warm here, so I probably haven't got a lot of drying time on this. You know, it might only be 20 minutes or something, that order. So, I can't put any more than that on because it's uh, just all going to run off on the paper, I think. So I've got it pretty much well covered, I think. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's a bit of stuff on the internet about doing this um, on a site and they, uh, they suggest what you do is you coat the roller like this and then you simply use a spoon so this isn't a packet of grit and I'm going to catch the excess on the paper so no easy way to do this as far as I can tell So we do this uh, once and then do it again. So, okay, so picked up my piece of newspaper. I'm trying to get all that back into this little cup down here. And the grip I didn't get on the roller. Yeah, well, that's most of it. Okay, Put another packet of grit. If I go again, just 
got to be prepared to lose a fair bit on the floor each time you do it. Trying to fill all the gaps in. Very high floor losses. Keep going, I'll stop. And don't forget to wear gloves, which I did, because this stuff is sticky as, of course. And it also lets you, I think, you know, you can bed down some of this directly into the resin. Rosin, depending on what country you come from. Um, yeah. So... That looks pretty good. That um, looks pretty much like pictures I was looking at. Anyway, look, that looks pretty good, I think, for the top coat. So I think I'll just leave that dry now and uh, come back to it and do the second coat. I'll do another coat and then, uh, yeah, see how it goes from there because that looks pretty gritty. So, but I think, this, the, well, you've got to do one at a second layer to seal it in. That's the thing. This just gives it something to stick to. but. Need another coat for it to see it settle it in, so um, yeah, should be good. All right, I'll stop fiddling with it because it's not helping. All right, so as you can see, there's quite a lot of it falls on the ground here. Um, you lose, and also got some in the cup. So that's just two bags. I've had two little sample bags of stuff now, which is. Um, uh, I'm not sure how much is in a bag, probably only 100 grams maybe. Anyway, here we go. One roller done-ish. Okay, this is the next day now. So, I've completed my first coating and uh, and um, as per earlier and I have then this morning so about 12 hours later was all quite firm so I came back and um, simply did a recoat of I made some more resin up and just painted that over the top of it to try and um, just seal all this in and I've added a little bit more of the aggregate or the grit to the surface um, in a few places. I think it'll probably just fall off though. As you can see it's um, still got a little ways to go. Uh, notice here too, it um, when it's runny it tends to, I probably should have left it solidify for a little bit because it's um, run down to the bottom of the roller. So there's a trap for new players. Make sure you um, probably let it go a little bit, paint it on and then wait and just rotate the rollers a few times. I went out, so I wasn't here to keep doing it. There's still some loose stuff on there, as you can see. So uh, I'm going to leave this now for another day and uh, let it really set over the next 24 hours, hopefully. It's quite critical too how you mix the part A, part B's of the resin. Oh, everything I've read on that on the net says the mixing quantities are critical and you also don't use very much I probably only had a plastic cup with about um, I lost a lot the first time um, just had to let it go because you can't keep it and so I reckon you probably need about uh, all up per coat about probably five millimeters in the bottom of a plastic cup And you can pretty much make sure you buy about four or five little cheapy paint brushes because there's no way to um, to keep them. They just they just go off. So there's no solvent or anything that I'm aware of that you can put them in. You can also just buy some cheapies and throw them away. 
Okay, so that's first one done. Here's a look at the other side, which you can see the rust underneath the uh, grit is quite extensive, particularly on the outside here. So, yeah, anyway, once again, uh, I haven't uh, wire brushed this yet, but there's a little speck attack every again. Okay, yeah, so, um, as I say, inordinate amount of rust on that roller underneath um, where the material came off, which as you can see here is, you can see the rust is embedded into the, underneath the epoxy. So, it'll be interesting to see how the new grit works. Anyway, I'll get on with it. So this is the first side completed. Um, two coats plus a bit of a patch up on the grit where I miss bits. There's a few lumps in it as you can see. Okay, second wheel after um, 12 hours. So I put the um, I put the rosin on a bit thicker onto this roller. Let it set a little bit before I um, put it on. Probably left it for a good 20 minutes or so. Make it a lot more gelatinous, a lot more viscous, if that's the right word. Anyway, a lot thicker. And um, I've still got gaps in it, and you still get a fairly uneven coating. So, as you can see here, it, you still get build up of, and you still get gaps. So, one more coat. Okay, well I've just put a little bit more. Get this into focus. Just put a bit more of um, this on. Probably still a bit thin because again it's um, tending to run all over the place. But um, I'll just give it a an even, but possibly a, try and keep it a thin coat. The drying time on this is still even in its temperature. It's it's still like eight hours for this to um, really, you know, you got to leave it for eight to twelve hours, I reckon. That'll have to do. We'll see how we go. Big test will be when I've got it all back together and. We try pushing it around. That'll be interesting. Okay, I'll stop at that point. Okay, time for the big test. So, I've done both the rollers, both sides, now, and they've both set. And it's been about probably two days, three days. Might have been three days. Definitely two days. So, I think to reach full hardness, the um, rosin needs 48 hours, you know, sort of to really set. So hopefully that's got it. So let's have a bit of a look at the rollers, the completed rollers, and then we'll we'll try the uh, we'll try driving it around and see how it looks and see if anything falls off it. I'm optimistic. Let's see how we go. All right, here's our completed roller, the first one we did, and it's really set hard. It's got quite good aggressive. Um, highly textured finish on it which is what I wanted to achieve because the other one was if you have a look back you'll see it's all it had all worn down quite smooth so I've no idea what these look like when they're new but um, it's certainly looking very robust now all right here we go so I've currently got that roller engaged to disengage I simply got to chop behind the wheel down here which you can't see but anyway I've got to chop down there and I just simply drills in reverse. So that's fully retracted and it's probably around, might be a bit more than 20 mils, but it's 
I think this could be closer. I was trying to avoid it being any closer because suspension moves up and down. So, But I think this needs to be closer to the wheel. So put this on. And this does both sides at the same time. This drive mechanism goes straight through and engages both. So you can do it from either side. So that's it, she's fully engaged. Okay, so when we turn this on, that's ready to go, red light's on, I'll drive it forward. Now it self brakes with the motors engaged, so that's broke, braked. Let's just try running it backwards. Alright, let's go. Yeah, now I'm just swinging it here from one side to the other. Now I couldn't do this before because when I swung it, the, the roller would slip. So you see, we've got the jockey wheel here. And because that put all the tension on one side, the roller would just slip around. So that's much better. So so I'm going to call that a success. As you can see, it makes it uh, very simple to manoeuvre. And in this instance in the carport, I can get that right up against the far wall, leave myself plenty of space here in the foreground. And uh, yeah, the fact that I can swing that now is really good. I definitely could not do that before. That would be, that uh, those rollers were slipping badly before, which is why I thought maybe I'd have to bring it a bit closer. But I'd say based on what it's doing at the moment, it's working really well. So happy with that. But they're this easy to move with a caravan mover. I'd still get some slippage in it, but anyway, the, um, Good part here is the grit's not coming off, which is good. It seems to be staying on there. But what, what, I can see what was spilt on the floor is still there, but it's not coming off the rollers. Um, I may need to adjust it closer, but I've always sort of put it down the fact that the grit wasn't working properly on the rollers. Well, I've done that now. It's, it's, the grit is really nice and aggressive finish on it, so it certainly engages and it. There's no reason for the grit to be slipping on the tyres. So if it slips now, it's just a case of me getting the rollers probably five mil closer so that it just pushes harder on the tyres. But uh, I certainly, when I was swinging from side to side previously, um, the rollers certainly did slip. So it, the surface is much better. And as I said, if you go back and have a look at what I started with and what I've got now, um, they're, you know, miles apart. Um, it was... There was a lot of, I'd say the grit had worn down. Um, there was a lot of rubber, rubber probably caught in amongst the grit and the rosin from the, you know, from the tyres, from just driving it around for years, uh, being on various caravans, two or three caravans, whatever it's been on, and uh, just to build up a stuff in there so that it just simply didn't have uh, the uh, aggressive sort of finish on it that you need uh, to stop it slipping. So I, anyway, yeah, it's good, looks good. Anyway, hope that uh, I hope that helps other people. I'm sure this is a, not an uncommon problem. Anybody that's got one of these um, machines, uh, early jobs, um, you don't have to replace the rollers with the new aluminium ones, which are a couple of hundred dollars each or more. Um, and you don't have to try and pull it apart, which I think would be quite a challenge because I don't think there's a lot else goes wrong with them. Um, it's just the on this Mark One version. I think it's just a roller issue. Um, you do have to redo that. Apart from that, it works perfectly. So if you can do it like I've just done on the machine, on the caravan, just by taking the wheel off, redoing it, putting your wheels back on, happy days. Um, all up cost, probably, I don't know, uh, I bought, I didn't have to buy a whole 25 kilo bag of grit. I got some sample bags to try it. Um, now, whether you could find somebody that would do that and just give you some little packets, um, 
he said it was too hard to charge for it because they just simply don't have an item in their inventory system for selling small quantities. And um, he said the people that bought it, they just used it for big things. So, I mean, there didn't seem to be a solution for getting a small quantity. Um, the resin is just called art resin. Um, now, when I asked him, I said, well, it's not for art, it's for this. He said, it doesn't matter, we just call it art resin because artists use it. But he said it's the same stuff used on uh, surfboards and all sorts of stuff. He said, it will be fine. Well, it's certainly set hard, it's no problem. So that's just normal, part A, part B, one to one mix art resin that's it uh, so not complex I you know I think I paid about 25 bucks for the resin and I've got sample bags of the grit so even if you had to buy the grit you know you might be all up looking at forty dollars worth of stuff Australian um, maybe you know, probably less elsewhere but I mean you know we always seem to get ripped off in this country on stuff but look it's not an expensive exercise to do this it's as good as new hope that helps don't forget to like put any comments, want to know anything, ask. I have got more video footage, uh, which I've cut right back. So um, I can put more up there. See you later.